Hello, everyone. Welcome to the monthly community meeting of the Transmart Foundation for February 2017. My name is Rudy Potenzone, and I welcome you to the call today. Uh, today, we're going to uh, cover uh, an up, a few updates uh, on the foundation, and I'm going to give you a preview of uh, what we're showing and discussing at the molecular medicine meeting in San Francisco. I'm at the convention, and um, we'll be we have a booth set up there if you happen to be at the meeting, we're in booth number 423. Um, we are on a GoToWebinar, uh, which means that everyone is muted. If you need to ask a question, uh, you have three choices. Uh, you can raise your hand. You can also type a question into the question window or send us a note in the chat window. Uh, we there will be questions at the end, uh, which you can um, save your question till then, uh, but we'll try to, to catch your questions as we go through this. The agenda for today, we'll do an update uh, on the foundation. Keith Elliston, our CEO, will present that. We'll give you a quick update on the version 16.2, 17.1, uh, and then I'll cover some of the topics um, that we'll be talking about uh, at the meeting today, including some announcements that um, you may not know about. Um, we are lining up some things in future meetings, including uh, next time uh, we'll have a Smart R presentation uh, and uh talking about some of the new workflows that are in Smart R in 16.2 and give us some uh, demonstrations of that. Uh, and coming up will be more information on 17.1 and some of the enhancements uh, in that project. <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, our first um, topic will be an update on the foundation and I welcome Keith Elliston, our CEO, uh, to present. Keith? Hey, Rudy, are you putting slides up? Oh yeah, can't you stay in? Ah, I didn't show my screen. Nope. Sorry. That's okay. There you go. Cool. Got it. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks, Rudy, for the introduction, and uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, uh, it's been a, a busy month here uh, at the Foundation, a, a lot going on. Uh, I think the, the key things that, that we've been focusing on is the uh, buttoning up the 16.2 the release, which has gone out uh, as Postgres, and then working on the 16.2 Oracle, uh, which is going out uh, in the near future. Uh, we're going through testing and, and running it through our testing and QA, QC process there. I'm very uh, very pleased with where we are with 16.2. We have a lot of new and interesting code there that Rudy will take us through. Uh, overall, we have uh, 130 uh, open data sets from our open data mission uh, that are uh, included in this, in this release, uh, which can be installed uh, with a script, etc., all Transmart ready. And that's part of our growing mission to, to bring more open data to the platform, uh, to lower the barriers for people to, to use Transmart uh, with the installs and, and with data that's available. Uh, so the team has been working pretty hard. The PMC has, has brought that forward. Um, we're now in the process of, of winding down the 16.2 PMC and spinning up the 17.1 PMC, uh, the Project Management Committee. Uh, we've just completed, uh, or we're very nearly complete, on the 17.1 uh, development cycle. Um, we've gone through, as people know, uh, the Transmart Pro Alliance was uh, was formed together with four of our member companies, uh, Pfizer, Sanofi, uh, AbbVie, and Roche, uh, that have come through and, and funded uh, this development cycle. Uh, we've been working with the Hive on doing that development. Uh, we've gone through the process where the code has been now uh, in its development phase uh, delivered at the end of the project and will be now input into our release process. So the, the key thing there is as we go through with all of our releases is to put the code through our quality assurance process, uh, our testing processes, uh, to bring uh, additional pieces together to be able to form the release. And just as an example, the, the 17.1 development uh, is built on the 16.1 code base. Uh, so there's a significant amount of work to bring it up to 16.2 uh, with the key pieces there, uh, particularly the Transmart app and some other key elements with the, the that have to do with ETL and, and other key pieces. So uh, we'll be working uh, diligently on that uh, with the 17.1 PMC. Uh, I think most of the members of that PMC have been recruited and uh, Rudy can take you through that in more detail. Um, a lot of people have asked uh, what's the, the release timing for 17.1. Uh, right now we, we typically reserve six months for our release cycle. Um, that's a, a general rule. Uh, we'll have a much more specific timing once the PMC has reviewed all the code, uh, looked at all the different contributions that need to come in, and, and have a good sense of exactly what will be in the release. So that's something we'll be working on over the next month, and, and you should hear some more detail about that uh, at our next community call. So uh, that's the on the code side and the content side. Uh, on infrastructure, uh, we've been working with uh, our partnership with IBM. 
Uh, our goal is to bring uh, you know, IBM uh, into the Transmart uh, Foundation, uh, into our community, and uh, part of that key, uh, the key project there has been uh, IBM has uh, provided us with a, a Power8 uh, platform. Uh, we have a, essentially an 82 processor, 3.5 terabyte, uh, 4 server platform that's been installed. Uh, we're hosting that at the uh, University of Michigan in the Michigan Institute for Data Sciences, uh, one of our key members in our academic uh, Members of Excellence program. Uh, and that platform will be used uh, initially for Transmart development, but also for uh, various data science projects. And so I'd encourage you that if, if you're a foundation member and, and have interest in, uh, in, in how we might use this platform uh, for grant-funded projects and things of that nature, uh, please get in touch with us. I think this is a nice resource for us as we move forward um, you know, on our mission of, of open science and open data. Uh, so that's a lot of a lot of work there. Uh, on the marketing side, uh, the team has been uh, working very diligently, and we've been doing a lot more cooperative work uh, with the I2B2 Foundation. So Rudy uh, is out there uh, in San Francisco at the Tricon meeting at our booth. Uh, Diane Keo, who is the, the managing uh, uh, the general the managing general partner, I guess it is um, at uh, at I2B2 Foundation, is out there with him. Uh, they're talking about some of the synergies between ITB2 and Transmart uh, as we keep working things forward there. So uh, if you're out at the Tricon or know people that are, uh, have them stop by and, and they can have a nice conversation. I know that uh, Rudy will also be showing a demo of, uh, of the ITB2 Transmart uh, instances uh, that have been put up for uh, NHANES and for the uh, Bear Disease Registry uh, that are publicly available, been made available by Harvard. Uh, we have a number of things coming in the pipeline. Rudy will take you through that in detail. Uh, but uh, one of the things I'm really excited about personally is uh, we'll be having our second annual meeting with the ITB2 Foundation um, at the Precision Medicine uh, Conference uh, hosted by Zach Kahani at Harvard uh, uh, at DBMI. I think I have a typo in there. Um, this is an exciting meeting. Uh, it's one where it's really a great opportunity to bring the ITB2 Foundation community and the Transmart Foundation community together particularly in the context of the Precision Medicine Initiative that, uh, that's been building at Harvard that, that Zach Kahani leads. Uh, I'm very excited about this. I hope uh, people you know, will save the date. I think we've sent out an email for that. Uh, but a, a nice, exciting meeting. And hopefully there will be some, some exciting news there. i uh, just remind people, uh, towards the end of May, we have BioIT World, as we usually work there. We'll have an exhibit there. Uh, and then our foundation annual meeting this year rotates to Europe. Uh, we're looking, uh, still finalizing dates and sites. We have three sites in contention. Uh, one site uh, that uh, we're, we're very uh, interested in is the uh, site at EBI, working with the group there that is, is also running Elixir and, and whatnot. Uh, I think that might be a very good uh, site for us, uh, working with Dominic Clark, who's been very generous in, in offering that to us, uh, and we're going through our, our final selection process. So we'll have that, that news uh, for people pretty soon, uh, but uh, our planning is that we will have that, the European meeting uh, in the October-November time frame again, as we have in the past. Uh, I will also just say uh, overall uh, that we've been spending a, a fair amount of time with the, the team at, at ITB2 Foundation, uh, working with, uh, with Sean Murphy and Paula Viak. We're very excited about the continued uh, compatibility between ITB2 and Transmart. Um, we've just been doing some interesting surveys. Uh, we've had some discussions with the National Center, National Center for Advanced Translational Sciences uh, with Chris Austin and Ken Gersing down there. And uh, one of the key things that we found is that uh, more than half of the CTSAs funded by NIH uh, are running Transmart, uh, and more than half of them are running uh, I2B2. And in fact, uh, of the 64 institutes there, 24 are running both I2B2 and Transmart. Uh, I think this is a really great sign for where we're going as a community, uh, that these key uh, clinical and translational science centers uh, are already uptaking this without any kind of push. And we certainly work, uh, look forward to working more closely with them uh, as they move forward with their mission of building collaborative networks across these 64 CTSAs uh, to be a more integrated clinical translational research group. So it's a lot of exciting stuff going on. Um, uh, Rudy will take you through some more details. If you have any questions at the end, happy to answer any questions. But uh, uh, thank you for joining, and let me turn it back over to Rudy. Okay, Keith, thank you. So um, let's see. First, uh, I will go through 16.2 um, just very briefly uh, and, and point you to some resources that we have. Um, the, um, the Postgres version was released uh, earlier this month. 
Uh, we really have, uh, there's been no significant defects reported, which is was really, really good, uh, obviously. And um, that uh, continues to, you know, there, there's some, some good things that are, that are in there. Um, and uh, it, it has been covered in quite a bit of detail in a number of uh, places that um, you, you can review uh, on the website. I think I have... Just a second. No, I don't have another slide. I thought I had a slide, but the, you know, the Smart R uh, is is in this release. Um, there are five workflows uh, in it, and uh, you can see demonstrations of those. Uh, Peter Rice gave uh, the community meeting in December and went through uh, in detail uh, a number of the, the, the a couple of the workflows, uh, and also at our annual meeting, we had a whole session on uh, sixteen point two capabilities. Uh, these are on the website and available to see. Uh, and so I encourage you to, to take a look. Um, Smart R is one of the, the highlight features. Uh, High Dome, some extensions to um, to the genomics uh, capabilities, using the, you know, being able to, to dive deeper in a number of the genomics um, uh, data sets that we have Alfred uh, work contributed by Johnson & Johnson, uh, Janssen Pharmaceuticals. Um, Pfizer has made some updates to GWAS along with work at Clarivate Analytics um, and uh, a number of XNAT, um, which is an image database uh, tool uh, providing uh, ability to, to bind some of the images to your data sets in Transmart and actually even see the images as you're looking at different uh, data sets. Uh, also, a number of changes and enhancements to our ETL. Uh, we fixed a few problems with loading large data sets uh, and as Keith mentioned, we have uh, added a number of additional data sets. So we have over 130 data sets in the, in the system available uh, publicly. Uh, and these are all contributed by members of the community. So we're very excited about the release. We think it's a, a pretty strong release. Uh, we, it's gone through our process. And um, I think you'll, if you take a look at it, you'll see some nice enhancements to the uh, existing, to the previous uh, 16.2 and the earlier version one um, uh, data sets um, that, Capabilities. We also have uh, some upgrade tools to help you get to 16.2. Uh, then they're all uh, also on the wiki. Uh, if you have uh, specific issues, um, we we may be able to help you or connect you with someone who could help. So uh, please take a look and, and let us know. Again, a lot of information is on the wiki uh, in terms of implementation. Uh, if you have an interest in loading a version on your own um, personal computer, your own personal server. There's actually an install script that uh, takes you through the entire process, it takes between uh, half an hour to an hour, depending on the power of your machine and your internet connections, but um, it will install on a, on a, uh, a clean um, area the entire system that you need to uh, run the, uh, the, uh, the release. So again, we're, we're pretty, very excited about it. Um, this is the Postgres version. Uh, the Oracle version is in preparation. Uh, we're getting to... Uh, the beta test, which should start very soon, uh, and we'll be looking for help in terms of testing the beta test, uh, testing the Oracle version itself, uh, and we hope to have the release of that uh, very soon uh, as we can. So that's 16.2. Again, I think a, a strong release for us, and uh, we're, we're very happy with uh, the outcome of that. 17.1, uh, this has been a funded project by a number of the members who had some specific uh, capabilities uh, that they're interested in, in deploying in the system. Uh, and uh, again, we had an entire session on this at the, uh, at the, the uh, foundation's annual meeting. Uh, these recordings were all out there with uh, a lot of detail in terms of um, the, the different capabilities. Uh, and the, this is working through um, this, the actual development of the backend pieces, modules A, B, and C, they were called, um, have been uh, delivered and uh, uh, passed all of their um, <clears throat> acceptance testing, uh, and uh, the final code is being now delivered to the foundation, uh, and a new PMC is being organized to actually manage this, as, as Keith mentioned, into the actual formal release uh, of the project. Um, the work that needs to be done is that it needs to be brought into the 16.2, um, you know, the 16 .2 features brought into it uh, and, and merged together, uh, as well as uh, having the, the some of the different components and plugins number of user interfaces that need to be bound in. And so it's a fair amount of work that, that has to be done on the development side. Uh, and uh, the various various groups who uh, have been working on these different pieces are uh, interested in working together. And we will 
uh, get this together and release just as soon as we can. Uh, and uh, as Keith mentioned, we will have more information uh, pro- hopefully by the next PMC, the next uh, community meeting, uh, specifically about what we expect uh, in terms of the schedule for this. So uh, stay tuned. Again, this is um, this is a major release. It's got a, some uh, very important uh, in, uh, updates to the infrastructure uh, and adds some very core uh, sets of capabilities. So you know, again, stay tuned. Um, the um, the PMC itself, you know, it's it's again going to be a fairly broad set of people involved in trying to, to um, you know, get this release together, uh, not just the, the developer uh, of the, the backend pieces, the Hive, but also a number of the folks who have contributed some of the key, you know, components that uh, represent the entire Transmart platform. And it's getting this entire platform together, uh, checked out and making sure that everything's working well. Uh, this is our, our commitment from the foundation to have a, a solid, strong release uh, so that once it's ready, you know, everyone can begin using it. So stay tuned. Uh, we are, you know, we're getting this together. So I wanted to, to use the, the Tricon meeting where, you know, in San Francisco, where I'm actually sitting today um, to talk about some of the initiatives, you know, that we've been working on. Um, at this conference, we've got a number of things that we're, we're presenting and that we're, we're discussing, you know, within the booth, uh, including, you know, a kind of a new introduction or introduction to Transmart. Um, I'm still pleased, and one of the reasons we come to this meeting in particular is that there are a number of people who will wander by and never heard of Transmart. We had last night, uh, Transmart was mentioned at a couple of the talks yesterday, and we had two or three people show up at the booth last night. Uh, instead of going and having another drink, came by to see what, what is this Transmart thing and what you know why should we know about it? So uh, I think it, it's important in terms of uh, reaching out to organizations who maybe should be thinking about Transmart um, Two, two people said that they were thinking about building their own platform. And now that they know about Transmart, they're going to take a hard look at us. And so very encouraging to, to see that, you know, uh, our, the community is out pre- talking about Transmart and presentations at the meeting, but then that's driving people to come by the booth and really uh, learn about what we're doing. So that's, um, again, you know, having a, a good introduction at the, at the booth has been really, really helpful. Um, we are talking about our uh, interaction with uh, I2B2 and, and the, the growing um, uh, collaboration between our groups, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a, in a second. Uh, we're highlighting our data sets uh, and also our training program, uh, and um, obviously highlighting 16.2 and talking more about the IBM Power Servers, and I'll, I'll cover each of these in a little more detail. First thing I want to mention is that we do have new handouts for uh, these first four things that we're giving out at the booth. These are, will be online on the um, on the website. If you have interest or need, you want to you know, need to talk to someone about um, some of these projects. These uh, give you a little more detail. So we've put together a new brochure on the foundation, bringing it up to speed, up up to date, uh, and uh, having that available to to hand out and show people. Um, we did write a new piece on precision medicine um, and what you can do having both I2B2 and Transmart together. Uh, this um, pulls together some of our thoughts about the, the key reasons, you know, why you'd want to use these two systems in some integrated fashion. Uh, hopefully you've all seen uh, the presentations by Paul Viak, who has actually built um, some a couple of public websites using data uh, that you can actually see the power of having the, the two together. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if you haven't seen these, please, uh, at the website, you know, at the, we, we spent the last community meeting in January uh, demonstrating this and describing, you know, some of the, the key reasons you might want to use these together. And uh, again, the, um, the, the video and the, the, the PowerPoint for that is up on the website. So this is the January 2017 uh, community meeting, uh, a lot of detail, some very nice video and a, and a live demo that um, Paul you know, presented for us uh, and certainly if you have interest, you have some questions, please uh, contact us and let us know. The other thing that we've done is that we've have these now 130 or so data sets and we've been trying to figure out, you know, how do we make these, you know, this information available? And so we've put together actually a brochure. This is the, the front page of it. Uh, this is our commitment to not just open source platform, but the open data that we can provide, uh, which, you know, come together and then couple into uh, open science. These are data sets that have been contributed and put into the public domain um, by people who, um, you know, maybe have um, done the curation or paid for the curation uh, and are making these available in, in some uh, open source licensing. Uh, and 
what we've done is put this into a, a brochure that uh, describes, you know, sorted by disease. It tells you about the data type, some information on the study. These tend to be, you know, these are geo data sets. They might be TCGA data sets. Uh, and this just shows you uh, in a quick glance, you know, you can go through this. It's about 10 pages uh, of this and, um, you know, who did the work. And um, these are all uh, available online if you go to the wiki into the data side. Um, if you've got Transmar instance running, uh, these include a script, which you can click on the script and these should, you know, up upload into your instance of Transmart. And so, you know, these are all the data sets that are available. They're all uh, Transmart ready, if you set, if you like, uh, and these can be uploaded into your version uh, of the of the um, of the system. Um, but now we've got this um, this brochure that we can hand out, and you know, especially you know people wandering around the the show, it's good for them to see, and they can get an idea of the kinds of things that are available um, for use um, in the system today. And then finally, we put together uh, a brochure on our training program. Uh, we're, we're pretty proud of this. We, we started this two years ago. This is now the third year. Um, these are all classes contributed by uh, the Hive, by Rancho Bioscience, and the now Clarivate Analytics. Uh, they, do, they donate their, their people's time. It's about a 90-minute. Each one of these is about a 90-minute uh, training class. Uh, we have a, one a month uh, in general, although this year, in addition to our monthly training, uh, we're going to be at the Etrix um, conference uh, and at BioIT World uh, doing some additional special training uh, programs. And if you look through these, you know, in the, the couple of pages here, uh, it shows the, the different types of um, uh, classes that we're offering. And uh, this is all on the website, of course, and uh, with full abstracts about uh, mostly what these classes are. And I just put this into a nicer slide. It's a little easier to read. Um, but it shows you that, you know, we, we're doing two intro to Transmarts this year, but uh, only two. And um, in addition to that, we're having some uh, advanced classes on data loading. Uh, it, and our first class is thanks to the, the Hive on, you know, developing uh, in Transmart, you know, how to get started, uh, some information on the programmatic interface, the API, uh, and uh, how do you do some modeling of your data, um, and uh, some advanced classes by, you know, by Clarivate. Uh, in terms of the uh, the types of analysis you can do, uh, and also advanced training by uh, Rancho uh, and their team um, with specific examples. Uh, they walk you through, they do an excellent job on walking you through a particular problem and how you would go through it and use some of the various tools in, uh, in the platform to actually do an analysis and get some answers. So uh, again, we, we're getting a little more aggressive here. Uh, and also, I should make sure I mentioned SmartR, uh, the Luxembourg folks are going to do a full session on Smart R in May. So, you know, again, I, I think this is um, this is really coming together uh, in, in a very strong program uh, that um, you know now not only just beginners, but um, you know, learning different aspects of the system is all possible uh, by taking some of these classes. These are all free, avail freely available. We are recording them and making them available on the website after the classes are done. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously the January class is finished, but as each of these complete, uh, they will be also added to our training um, channel on, um, on YouTube. Uh, all, of our, all of our recordings go end up on YouTube, and we, um, you know, but we also link to those on the website. And I see a number of typos in this slide. Sorry about that. So um, the next thing I'll mention is the, you know, the 16.2. We, we do have a demonstration of 16.2. Uh, on the available in the booth that we're showing. Uh, we do have a recording of this from our November community meeting uh, and also the slides are, are out there uh, as well as uh, going back to our uh, annual meeting. And so a lot of this information uh, is there. You can see, um, you know, a, a quick demo of each of the different features and the types of things that, um, that you can do with it. Uh, and also the slide decks are, are out there. I, I, I encourage you to to take a look at um, the system and uh, get an idea of you know what the new capabilities are and, and you know some sense of how people are using them. Uh, again, there's a lot of work has gone into this new version, uh, and I th we, we think that there's some some really important new uh, new capabilities there. Something that you know we haven't talked about much. We've been kind of behind the scenes working on this. There there have been a few um, public uh, mentions, I believe, but. Uh, we have been working a, a collaboration with IBM uh, on their uh, Power8 server series. Uh, this is something that um, you know we've been in discussion for for a, a while. Uh, they've done some work with um, with with Rancho Bioscience on uh, on uh, deploying 
uh, at a few test sites um, uh, the, um, the the Transmart platform. And so we're we're uh, getting a, a lot, you know, more formalizing this relationship to actually put together a, a much stronger um, uh, capability and a much stronger version of the Transmart platform. Um, there we go. Uh, so we have a, a collaboration now uh, working with IBM, uh, and the goal is to really optimize the the latest version sixteen two. Uh, of the of the Transmart platform on the Power8 server series, um, we're working towards a release, um, you know, in the spring hopefully, and uh, in, also working with some of the collaborations. The University of Michigan, uh, Michigan is not only a gold member, founding member of the foundation, uh, they are on our board of directors, um, and they're also one of our centers of excellence uh, as an ac academic user of the the, the platform. Uh, and they're also uh, serving as a host site of these machines. And so in one of their, their data centers, as, as part of their data science program, uh, they have installed uh, these, these servers. Uh, they're not quite fully up yet, but uh, we expect to have a fully operational machine within a couple of days. Uh, and then we'll begin working actually on the release. And so it will be a collaboration between us um, to, uh, to really put together uh, a very powerful and a very strong uh, capability. I think Keith mentioned, you know, the the number of um, uh, total cores, and uh, this uh, this manifests as a, a set of four servers that we have now installed. Uh, three of them are, are very large, very significant machines, and um, together these represent a, a very powerful base uh, to run not only the the platform but also be able to load significant amounts of data and do some significant analysis uh, against that data uh, using the Transmart platform. Uh, and so, again, we're, we're all quite excited about um, bringing this all together and, and making this available. Uh, kind of the, 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 the schedule right now, uh, these are being uh, deployed uh, and brought up by the University of Michigan staff um, with, with some help from IBM. Uh, and that's, um, that's expected to be done. Uh, hopefully, in the next few days, we should have running operating machines. Um, the installation and testing of 16.2 will, will take place uh, hopefully during March and we'll have that completed fairly quickly. There is a version, an older version, that does run uh, already on the Power 8, but um, getting, you know, using the latest version I think is very important and we're, we're working to get that uh, up and running. The plan is that that will, you know, we, we will have a version of that as a demo that you'll be able to get access to and, and uh, to, to see the, the system operating on the Power 8. Uh, and also, we, we hope to be using it even in our training classes uh, to help, you know, develop the, um, you know, the, uh, the the use of the system. It should look like it does on, on every other machine. And so um, we're, we're hoping to have that up. We do expect to take uh, some time to really configure uh, the performance um, in the, uh, of the, the platform to really get the best performance that we can from it. Uh, there's uh, IBM has done some initial work. They're very excited that you know, this will be an extremely uh, well-performing environment for us and uh, be able to do some pretty significant studies. Uh, and so we're, we're projecting that, you know, all this work will get done and we'll have a very, very good release uh, in the June uh, timeframe. So uh, as I say, that work is underway and, um, you know, we're continuing to, uh, to push ahead there. So um, that's, um, that's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, again, as Keith mentioned at the beginning, we've got a lot of lot going on uh, across the foundation. This represents uh, the work of, of the, the, the management team, uh, the support of the board of directors, but uh, most importantly, by the, the, commu the community itself. Uh, so much of the work and the accomplishments that we have uh, in, you know, from the, the foundation really comes from the, the membership. And this is a lot of contributions from, you know, the scientists of the, the different groups. You know, we... we have um, you know in the in the order of 150 or so groups using the, the platform, uh, quite a few of them you know do contribute back you know, whether it's testing or specific code uh, suggestions and recommendations and so that's obviously an important part of being a community and being you know the the, the Transmart Foundation. Uh, it's um you know it's 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 been uh, it, it continues to be a very strong capability across the the group so. I will. Uh, that's uh, that's the end of what I wanted to present. I will ha be happy to open it up for questions now. If anybody has a question, um, 
You can, uh, as I said, raise your hand. You can also type in a question into the question window uh, or um, type something into the chat window. So let me open it up either for me or for Keith. One hand. I, already had, <clears throat> I saw a comment from, uh, I hope I don't mess this up, but uh, Yu Hyun Kim uh, from LSU. Okay. On I, on Transmart on IBM. He says LSU has been running Transmart on the IBM platform with the help of IBM. Uh, any other new aspects of the Michigan instance? Question. Uh, ours can be made accessible, and he gives a, an address. No, great. Um, we certainly have been aware of the of the work that IBM has done there. I'm not sure which version you're running there, uh, Yu Hyun. Uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more about that, uh, but we would love to work with you on that. We, we just are getting this platform up and running now, uh, and any help and advice uh, and, and collaboration that we could give that could get there, we'd be really appreciative. I don't know, Rudy, if we can uh, unmute Yoon Hoon. I think if I can do that, hold on. I'm looking for him. Did I pronounce your, did I pronounce your name there right? Uh, yes, Ju Hyun. Ju? Yes, Ju Hyun. Ju Hyun. Okay, Ju Hyun. Uh, sorry about that. Um, did you want to ask any further questions or, or any have make any more comments? Uh, no, just I, I'm I'm wondering, you know, whether there are new features actually added because um, we install 6.2 after 6.1, you know, the, and we have actually two different instances. One is for development, one is for just service. So we are trying to get more audience and uh, we have some interest from uh, LSU Medical School and we are going to have meeting for LSU Shreveport Medical School you know, the, you know, the researchers you know, in this week so we are very you know, active on you know, using Transmart and introducing Transmart to the, the translational research community around LSU Louisiana yeah, that's, well, that's fantastic. That's great. If there's anything we can do to help support that, that would be great. What I would love to do is get you in touch with uh, our sysadmin at, uh, at Michigan who is uh, configuring our platform. We don't currently have Transmart running on that platform, so if we could uh, you know, uh, get some of your advice and experience there, I would love to get the 16.2 platform up and running on that, pla on that system ASAP. Yes, so the website is our you know, web portal, so you can see the software section, mm -hmm. then you can just see the link. So you can uh, immediately access the login page. If you want, you know, we can create in you know, the account. So you know, that, that's also possible. So we also need a lot of you know, feedback. Yeah, that, that's great. Rudy, can you connect, can you connect uh, Ju Hyun with yeah. uh, Kevin Smith? Yep, I will do that. Yeah, I think we met, you were at our uh, the user meeting, right? Um, really well, I was in the annual meeting the yeah. last November. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. So we've met. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, we'll we'll make that connection. Absolutely. Thank you. I wasn't aware that you had already brought up sixteen two, so that that's really good news for us. Did you find any particular issues when you brought it up, or was it pretty vanilla? Um, I think you know the I just used for demonstration. Um. Yeah, I think pretty you know, cool, especially we are interested in Smart R because we are right. developing something similar to Smart R to connect EAE. We are also working with you know, Imperial College. Mm -hmm. So and you know, hopefully we can show up this interface as well as some, you know. So our goal is to provide, you know, I mean, development size, um, large scale, in a computing resource as backend, so mm -hmm. EA is one option. So hopefully yep. we can show some progress in the coming annual meeting. That would be great. That's fantastic. Okay. We, Rudy, you might want to have Kevin also speak with Juhun Juhun yeah. about the uh, Academic Centers of Excellence program. It sounds like yep they're kind of working in the network. Yep, we'll do that. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you very you. much. All right. Thank um, you. Now, uh, let's see, Natalia, you said you had some question. Um, let's see if I can try to unmute you here. Okay, Natalia, you should be able to talk. 
Okay, okay. I have two questions. One question okay. is about the upgrade script. For the 16.1, there was an upgrade script to go from 1.2.4 to 16.1. Yes. For the 16.2, it doesn't seem like there is a script like that. Is there any plans of releasing a script to facilitate the upgrade of existing 1.2.4 instances? Yes. Um, I, yeah, maybe, um, Peter, could you answer that I th Peter I think uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me yes go ahead yes yeah. yeah so we do plan update scripts we're working on the Oracle um, instance first and then we'll add the update scripts they won't be um, very much to update for 16.2 it's mainly adding a few tables for so some it's, going plugins. Be, it's going to be an um, update for some of the work yeah, so it'll be from 16.1 to 16.2, and some of the work has already been done by the 17.1 um, developers. So we can borrow their update scripts and check them. Okay, so update script will be from 16.1 to 16.2, not from 1.2.4 to 16.2. You, you'd run those first. So they, those already exist for um, Postgres, and we'll add them for Oracle. Okay, and my so answer is... So 17.1 developed for Oracle, so they had to write their own update script. It's from 1.2.4 to 16.1 to 16.2 to 17.1 for Oracle anyway. Let me jump in real quickly just to make, because it sounds confusing to me. The way we have this set up is if you're going from 1.2.4 to 16.1, there's an update script. And going from 16.1 to 16.2, there's an update script. If you want to go from 1.2.4 to 16.2, you have to run both the 16.1 script and the 16.2 script. That's correct, isn't it, Peter? That's right. Yes, yeah. that's okay. it. Okay, so it, it's clear. So that the second script will be coming out soon. Yes. Okay. Um, and my it will be question, coming out soon as soon as we put Oracle and we finish 16.2. Okay. And my other question is about data sets that are available. Are there any information with these data sets on how they were kind of produced? Because with geo data sets, it's easy. You just download them. The TGA, DCGA data sets, like some of the high dimensional data, require certain pre-processing, some maybe normalization. So is there any kind of metadata information about how they were prepared? Um, I we don't... didn't get anything with those data sets, but we mm -hmm. can try to chase some of them up. And we have been promised some new ones, so we can certainly check with the new ones coming in. Rudy, did you want to comment on that? Okay, Why... thank you. Yeah. I think you know it, we'll we'll talk offline, but you know just to to make sure what kind of information would you like to see because we can ask for it as we're getting the contributions. So, yeah, I think the important thing is to make sure that this data sets that you can qualify this data sets as just uh, a testing data sets, or can you qualify this data sets as okay. clean, prepared, and and useful for actual research? Yeah, I think, Rudy, um, aren't all the data sets documented on the wiki? Uh, yes. I don't know how much documentation there that's, is for each one. That's the that's challenge. I'm wondering. There might not but be. I think yeah, that, that's what we have we, to look at. Yep. Yeah. I know that we yeah, are. We can work uh, through them. Go ahead, So the, the geo ones are, as, as Nassari says, they're just geo ones that have been uh, curated and put in. The, the test ones are clearly marked as test from Sanofi. And they're not necessarily real study data. They're there to test the data. Data types, so they're in a separate table. So this Natalia, is the ones that you, are need a little more information, I think. If, if you yes, could so spare, I will try to get some information. They came through uh, Etrix, so I know who to contact. Natalia, if I can make a suggestion, if if you could submit the questions that you would like to see documented yeah. for these data sets uh, to Rudy and to Julie Bryant, uh, who are the the co-chairs of the content committee. Uh, they can work to make sure that we collect that information when people contribute these sets, uh, and then it's well documented on the wiki. Mm -hmm. um, so if you would do that, and if you would, in fact, like to, to contribute to the content committee, we'd certainly invite it to do that as well. Okay, I will do that. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll the, the challenge here is that all these data sets are, are community contributed. Um, we have not yet done any sponsored projects to do curation, so we're relying upon uh, you know the strength and, and, and the contributions of the community to, to build up these data sets. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Natalia. We'll we'll talk some more. Another question. Hands raised from Shukath Raza. I'll unmute you. You should be able to talk. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Hello, yeah. Uh, I have you. a question. Like, uh, where can I find information uh, about adding a new project to I2B2 demo? Because I am trying to add a project, but I don't know how to add the data to it. Our Are we data. talking about an I2B2 project or a yes, transmit yes, project? Yes, I am. I am talking about I2B2. Okay. Uh, what we'd have to do there is is refer you to the I2B2 group, and I think Rudy, you'll be talking with Diane later today. Yes, that's right. Um, okay. They're in San Francisco, but let's connect you with the right people at the I2B2 Foundation because uh, I don't I don't think we know the answer to that. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. Um, so hopefully, as we as we work more closely together, we, we'll be able to help with those kinds of questions. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Okay, uh, Venkata, you're on. You're unmuted. Uh, Rudy, just I want to say that uh, the previous question for the metadata of the data oh. sets, I mean, it is a very good question that we can provide. For the data sets, we provided from Matrix. Okay, yeah. provide the metadata. Okay. Uh, that's really good, a good thing because, okay. you know, uh, our TCGS stuff, uh, the, I mean, the, the data, whatever the data we provided, that's really real data that can be used for research, but uh, we, we, we can provide the metadata. Perfect. We will follow with Peter and you. Yes, great. And, uh, oh, Rudy, I have another thing. Okay. I, I did not get the name of the person previously who is developing the smarter, similar smarter visuals. Would you mind to connect him to yes, the Yes, absolutely. Session? I will do that. And then you know we can yep. discuss few things and plan, yeah. not you know to to make it complimentary. I, I will make an uh, email introduction in, uh, later today. That would be great. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? I don't. Um, I saw Julia had a question about Open Bell. Okay. You want to uh, unmute Julia? Okay, Julia. Julia, you should be unmuted. No, I missed it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I seem to be. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just was wondering if. Uh, uh, if there are any uh, next steps coming up yet, or or uh, is this still um, on hold pending various Transmart developments? I know it's been so busy. Uh, it's been pretty busy, Julia. But what we've done is uh, we worked with with William uh, and a team to uh, bring up some Amazon infrastructure there. Uh, do you have any details on that, Rudy? That I know we had some challenges with that. Yeah, no, we're we're still working through that. So the the key thing is to put up some technical infrastructure. Uh, I think William has put together a, a regular meeting of a, of a core group. Uh, I haven't had a chance to check in with him on that, but uh, uh, you're right, we've been pretty busy, but this is still something we want to keep working on, and I think the, the key thing that we've been trying to work through is getting that Amazon infrastructure established. Sure, thank you. I, I'll, I'll look out for that meeting. I, I haven't heard anything, but... Uh, uh, well, Julia, what, what, I, what I would ask is if, if you're interested, if you want to reach out to me, I can I can help put things together, and if you would help organize, you know, we can speed things up. Uh, sure, sure. I mean, let's yeah, let's take that offline. Thanks. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Julia. Okay. Um. Unknown caller. Let's see. Is that a, a note by Alex. Let me see if we can unmute Alex. Yeah, quick. let me do it. Let's see. Okay, Alex, you're unmuted. Hi. Hi. Hey, Alex. Hey, uh, so I actually got an email from Mariska from Tree about um, the standardization of the study trees. I know I had a talk about that um, in the last um, oh. foundation meeting. So okay. I was wondering if anyone else wanted to join the call or what your thoughts were um, with that initiative. I know. Uh, Natalia, you're on the call if you want to join, or Siraman if she's still interested. Yeah, I would like to join. Okay, all right, it's already just Friday. <coughs> can, I, Friday can I make a okay. suggestion, Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Um, if, if you have like the, the call details and the information, Rudy can send out a, an e a targeted email uh, to the user community and, and see how many people want to join. Okay, I mean, um, basically all it was was um, sharing the, the standards that, that I presented. And then I was just saying, like, let's have just a quick call on what you know, uh, what she has and what I have. Um, it wasn't anything really. That's yeah, that's, your standards I have posted on the wiki, and uh, the Hive they promised that they will give us 
their standards as well to be posted on the wiki. Okay. But I think a, a general discussion would be also very useful. Okay, so um, are you okay with uh, Friday? Yeah. Okay, um, and then um, do you think Siriman will be interested, or do you think that's... I will follow up with Siriman. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and we anyone someone... else on the call? What? Let's say, do we have someone from the Hive that, that would like to participate there? They want to put their hand up? <coughs> I can, I, I, can Ward to Ward. Up, I, don't, I can't unmute Ward because it looks like he doesn't have a microphone. <coughs> but he's Ward, you, <laughs> yeah, he's unmuted, but he has, I don't know if he's got he a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a question. Yeah. Let me see if you've got something in the question here. Hold on. Oh, okay. yeah. Hello. There you are. Yeah. I'm able to unmute now. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we'd love to join. Um, I think what Natalia was referring to was the same tree uh, that we worked on with the data team from the Hive and CT Manfred. But uh, indeed, I'd love to join that call. Okay, yeah, and this is really casual. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think no expectations, please. <laughs> yeah, what, what, we also have a set of uh, of standards um, uh, templates. I think similar to what you worked on, Alex. Um, templates for all kind of data types to uh, for for researchers to capture their all the metadata that's necessary to get into Transmart. Um, also from CTM and Trade, and we can also share that in this uh, stage. I guess. So, so I would suggest that you know let's let this working group you know kind of get together. Maybe if, if we if you come up with you know if you can come up with an agreed standard, say we can then circulate that and maybe have a presentation that. At the, you know, I'd help. I can help get it circulated to the whole, the whole um, community, and then maybe have an, a, a presentation of it at, at a community meeting, maybe the next time. Let's just make sure we, if we can capture the information on that wiki page, yeah. that would be great too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah so, it, it's um, been, been captured, and as I'm trying to get information from various people. Great. Good. Is there anyone from the foundation that would want to join that, or do you want me to send notes of it? I, I can try to. Let, if you, okay. you, let me know what it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I think it's 10 a.m. on Friday. Okay. Yeah. You guys are all members. You're all part of the foundation, too. Don't forget. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, can you send it to, to Becky? Because she has disappeared. She promised to share something, and not Becky? just one of my emails. Yeah. Who's Becky? Becky, uh, she was talking about hoarding cats, remember? <laughs> it's a very funny YouTube video. Uh, I don't remember her email. Uh, well, oh, I, I, will, oh, I know who you're talking um, Yeah, I'll take a look. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, I will follow up with you then offline. Okay. Great. All right, sounds good. Okay. Good, thank you. That, that's, that's really... I, I did Fantastic. do that stream. Okay, anybody else have any questions or comments? Or having a meeting that they'd like to talk about and, and yeah, right. bring people into. Right, right. Look at hands up. Um, we had we talked to Natalia, we talked to Venkata, we talked to Vard, yep. uh, and Shukath. I think we've got Let's everyone. Hands up. I don't see any more questions in the question window. Okay. Well, I think we'll um, we'll close then. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone. Um, all this will have is has been recorded, and uh, as I said, we'll get this up hopefully later today uh, on our webpage. And uh, we'll see you at the next community meeting in a month. Uh, please check out the training schedule. See if there's anything uh, interesting for you or your colleague. Register for those. And uh, if anybody happens to have a colleague at the uh, at the, the molecular medicine meeting here in San Francisco this week, send them send them by our booth, booth number four twenty three. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks.